since we're talking about contentious issues, let me address the other one, and that has to do with, uh, with what happened at the WTO in Nairobi. Uh, and there are concerns that the U.S. would like the Doha round to conclude uh, and, and drop it, and India and, of course, other emerging economies or developing economies would like the Doha round to continue. Uh, can there be any convergence on this front at all? International trade, in order for it to be sustainable and durable, has to benefit all people, not but just... But that's what Doha is about, right? Well, uh, that's what Doha was about. Mm. And at some point, we lost uh, the focus of Doha on helping ordinary people, and we ended up in a subsidy-rich environment. And that's what we were trying to get away from. And in fact, the agreement in Nairobi actually made considerable progress on that front with regard to reducing, if not eliminating, export subsidies. Mm -hmm and uh, creating more of a level playing field, that's ultimately where uh, the world trading system is headed. If you look at TPP, if you look at TTIP, if you look at the other regional trading agreements, it's about increasing standards for workers, mm -hmm. it's about increasing standards for intellectual uh, uh, property protection, and it's about decreasing trading barriers. We understand that some of these agreements have to be tailored to meet, for example, India's mm -hmm. specific development challenges, perhaps it's agriculture uh, needs, but that can be worked into agreement. But the days of high barriers and low standards uh, for either intellectual property or for the environment or workers, I think those days are well behind us. Since we're talking about trade agreements, let me ask you about the impact of the TPP and how you see India fitting into the equation. The Indian government, uh, when the TPP or the decision to, to finally sort of ink the TPP uh, came about, uh, didn't seem particularly perturbed. There seems to be a change in that as we get more details uh, on the TPP. And now the, the position seems to be that this could be a 1991 sort of challenge facing the Indian economy. How do you read India in light of the TPP agreement? Look, I don't think there was any uh, interest in keeping India out of TPP. I also don't think India expressed a strong desire to be in the, in the first round. I think what we should do is try to get through this first round. There was an important signing uh, in New Zealand last week. The various countries will have their own ratification procedures. And I think as we look to uh, further rounds, whether they're regional rounds or whether it's a bilateral uh, treaty between the U.S. and India, mm. I think we should explore all those options. And, and again, the goal should be to be more integrated into the global trading system. That's where the best opportunities are going to be. You know this already, but if you look at the amount of regional trade in South Asia, it is the smallest in the mm -hmm. world. I think only 5% of the trade is conducted amongst the countries in South Asia. So we've got to do better than that. I know India wants to do better than that. There are customers in other parts of the world. There are markets in other parts of the mm -hmm. world that they want to be a part of, and that's going to be possible through these regimes that are being negotiated uh, today. So speaking of negotiations and, and agreements, the U.S.-India Bilateral Investment Treaty, the cabinet here has finally cleared right. uh, the template as far as the Bilateral Investment Treaty right. is concerned. The conversations with the U.S. have been going on since 2008. Are you confident, optimistic of, of, uh, of a closure anytime soon as far as the BIT is concerned? Well, look, to be fair, we took several years to come up with our model bilateral investment treaty, and now I know India has taken uh, its time to come up with its treaty. Uh, thankfully, we were given the opportunity to comment uh, on it. I think what we're looking for is to make sure that the gaps between us are not so big mm -hmm. when we sit down to negotiate. So uh, is there more convergence now? Uh, I, think we're, I think we're getting there. Let's see what the final version looks like. So on the basis of what you've seen so far, do you believe that we're closer to being able to start that negotiation I, process? I, I believe we're closer. I hope we're closer. It's a priority in our economic uh, relationships. As far as IPR is concerned, and there's been a considerable amount of work that's been done on both sides right. to try and find convergence. Uh, are we closer today to the U.S. seeing India's point of view as far as IPR is concerned and the IPR-related issues are concerned? There's a new intellectual property policy coming out. Look forward to that. Uh, publication. Again, we are encouraged by the commercial courts that we hope will have some specialty in intellectual property rights. There's still a lot that we can do together to harmonize our two mm. systems on, on what does it mean to mm. make an enhancement to your invention. Is that still? But we, we have really had an excellent conversation mm. on intellectual uh, property. We have to be careful that we um, make sure that 
that, again, the best science and the technology, whether it's in the renewable area, whether it's in the agriculture area related to seeds and crops, we want those companies to feel like they have a home here in India and that their inventions and their discoveries and their science are protected the, the way they would be protected in any country around the world. I think that's what India wants. Uh, you know, in the pecking order of concerns, where would IPR be today? I think it's, it's one of our top five priorities for sure, as it is, like I said, for other uh, Indian companies. But I, as I look at our priorities for 2016, it's about continuing to uh, move towards that 500 billion two-way trade number. It's continuing to work on our ease of doing business mm. uh, issues. It's to continue to attract Indian uh, investors to the United States. It's continuing to build the commercial linkages here. Mm. And when I look at some of the challenges in, in, in Delhi, particularly in the parliament, I, I see a reflection of, of what's, oh, what's happening back home in Washington. I see the po also see the potential for some important reforms uh, coming, whether it's on bankruptcy or, or GST or on land. Those are all, again, important, not just signals, but those are important structural reforms for people who want to be here in this market.